It's 5.55 and 55 seconds. Turn on your headlights. It's time for Night Drive. Good evening and welcome to Night Drive. I'm your host, Horace Wexler. It's late and I'm feeling great in this little slice of paradise. Though, if I'm being honest, I'm not feeling all that great today. In fact, I'm feeling pretty bad. I just found out that I have a giant hole in my heart. A gator-sized hole. After hearing of the passing of Gator Greg Luganis, beloved alligator, unofficial mascot, and friend. What can you say on a day like today when uh, practically the whole town is is out there grieving and, and we're left only with our memories. Memories of Gator Greg Luganis launching himself out of the water to, to chomp the meat mayor every mayor's day. Well, at least every mayor's day as far back as I can remember. And it wasn't too long ago the whole town saw Gator Greg performing in this year's mayor's day parade where he still looked incredibly well, and not in a good-for-his-age type of way that you might use to describe your 101-year-old grandfather who's all dust and IV bags. No. No. Gator Greg looked legitimately good out there on that parade. And I think some of us thought that he would just go on forever. But sometimes it's only in death that we can realize what we had and what we've lost. Tonight on Night Drive, we're remembering Gator Greg Luganis, giving him a send-off as he slides from this terrestrial bank into the ocean of sky. Of course, alligators would die if they went into the ocean, so that metaphor doesn't quite track, but you get my gist. If you have memories you'd like to share about Gator Greg Luganis, or if you just want to send your grief out to the community so we can all grieve together, I'm here for you. That number to call is 305-209-9686. You're listening to Night Drive. I remember uh, the first time I saw Gator Greg. Uh, it's still as clear as day to me. <laughs> I was visiting Duck Winter's Gator Ganza, uh, the first one. This was long before he had the second. Uh, and it happened to be uh, one of the days that Gator Greg got out of his enclosure. I think we all remember how smart he was. Uh, Duck, yeah, Duck used to call them Greg's Promenades. <laughs> they were, of course, terrifying to anyone unfamiliar with the promenades, i.e. me. I just taken in some rather intriguing alligator gars, and I had stepped away to use the restroom. Well, there I am, at the urinal. I had just unzipped, and I look over, and there was Gator Greg, just, just chilling in the bathroom, not a care in the world. And I absolutely froze. He had gotten a, a rabbit or a puppy or something, I, I'm not sure, and he, he was just having a little snack there uh, for like three or four minutes. Not a care in the world. He's he's slopping blood and, and bits of pelt everywhere, and I'm thinking I should probably cut and run. When Duck bursts in, and Duck is hopping mad, it, he tears into Greg and starts yelling because Greg's supposed to be doing a show right then, and on top of everything else, a Duck had had him on a diet so that he could fit into his costume, and there's Gator Greg having a, a secret snack in the toilets. It, it just felt so humanizing. And Duck's pissed, you know, because he doesn't want to have to let out the stitching on the costumes, and he's screaming, how are you ever going to be a movie star if you're fat? But uh, I felt like in that moment, he and I connected. I understood nipping off to have a secret snack. I think uh, a lot of us would. But it's not really about the snack or whose puppy it was that got eaten. No, it, it's about getting away from your cares and the troubles of the world, even if it's just for a moment. Escaping your cage and finding somewhere quiet and shittier to eat. I had just recently done the same thing, and that's how I ended up right here in Fakahatchee. We knew each other. Also, I kind of felt like Greg respected me for not narking him out. 
Of course, that set off a whole chain of eating that that got Gator Greg fired from Lake Placid. Uh, David E. Kelly uh, fired him because he thought Greg had turned into a bit of a tubbo, and he didn't want people snickering at his film when the alligator appeared and wheezed, trying to drag itself up out of the water. But I think it's it's David E. Kelly's loss. I don't think Gator Greg had Hollywood dreams. I think he was looking for a simpler existence right here in Fakahatchee, far away from the lights and the glitz. And I like to think that he and I found it. But enough about my memories of Gator Greg. I want to hear what you're thinking on a day like this. Call me up, 305 209 9686. Well, let's go over here to uh, to line three. Tonight we're talking about uh, the loss of uh, Gator Greg Luganis. Uh, go ahead, caller. Oh, hey, horse. It's me, it's me Duck. And I'm just. Oh, oh I am. I am just broken up over here. About Doc, Gator Greg. I, I am so sorry. Thank you. I am so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's It's been it's been a real trying time because, you know, he was my best friend. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, how many friends do you have for 20 years, first off? And then how many of those friends did you have for 20 years? Make you money. Okay. I mean, he was by far the best friend that I have ever had. Right. 20 years is uh, quite a, a long time. Um, that, what, what a relationship you two must have had. Oh, my God. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, the thing is that he was such a giver that I would describe him as a giver. Gator Greg Luganus, because he's still making me money because you could buy bits of him in the gift shop now. You right. know, he, um, you have these little, like, kind of uh, coin purses made out of gator skin because he, he's just doing what he loves, you know, ingesting the coins mm-hmm. in the purse. Well, I remember you would always have uh, guests at uh, Duck Winter's Gator Ganza come up and uh, throw coins into his mouth to make a wish. Yeah, yeah, it was a way where your wish came true. You know, mm-hmm. you throw it, and, and, and the, the bigger the coin, the more expensive it was, the more your wish would come true. Like, pennies, I'm sorry, but that's just, you throw a penny into a wishing fountain, like, what wish you think is going to come true from a penny, okay? You know, if you want something to come true, you got to throw a silver dollar in there, because you got to have some skin in the game. I mean, a penny? Okay, well, oh, I hope it doesn't snow out today. Okay, maybe. You know, you live in like California or something like that. Like, you know, give a shit about your wishes, people. Right. It's, it's just one of those things that make me so angry. I go to a fountain, I just see a bunch of pennies, and it's basically just seeing like, like copper garbage that you're just polluting waterways with. Okay, it's silver or gold, because if you don't care, you know, the great man above isn't going to care either. I, I, Duck, I, I don't know if I ever told you this or, or anybody else, actually, but um, uh, when I first started at KFAK, I was like, ah, I really wish I could have my own show. And I took uh, a silver half dollar that I won uh, on slots, uh, and I, I chucked it right into Gator Greg Luganis's mouth. And I was like, well, this is going to be something. Wow. I, and, and look at where you're at now. Right. I mean, it, it, just the king of the radio. I mean, it just goes <laughs> to show you how... How much of a giver Gator Greg was? You know, I once, you know, one time around Christmas, I was a little sad, and I was wishing for a Christmas miracle. I wanted a a, a bucket of scud, and I didn't have the money for it, you know, because those scud buckets were about $50 at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I threw in a roll of quarters into Gator Greg's mouth, and the next day I went to the store. I stole a bucket of scud, and I got away with it. (laughs) I oh, did you uh, throw the quarters one by one or as a big roll? No, I just chucked the whole thing in there like a fast baseball. Nice. Yeah, that's how he liked it. Duck, can I ask? Um, do you know what what caused this? Uh, was it anything in particular? Was he was he just uh, well, yeah. getting up there I mean, in age? I mean, a little column A, a little column B. You know, I mean, he. You know, we thought he was sick initially, and then you know, well, here's the thing: we pulled Alleyway Steve out of him, and oh. I think that might have been the wrong move because I think, you know, Alleyway Steve living inside of him was like a, like a symbiotic relationship, which kind of makes sense because both of them like to leap out and bite you, you know? Yeah. And I think when he wasn't in there, it just was too much for Greater Gig to go on by himself. He couldn't survive without Alleyway Steve. So I don't know. Maybe he died of like a broken heart. 
or you know maybe you know after having all them coins put into them for over 20 years maybe that caught up with them could have yeah. some kind of metal poisoning you know also you know i don't know could have just been old i don't know how long gators live i'm not like wikipedia right I, that's crazy uh alleyway steve uh it disappeared so long ago i think i think everyone just kind of assumed that uh he he was dead uh he, he was living inside of gator greg luganus yeah, he he had a pretty nice setup in there too. You'd be surprised how much room you could carve out inside of a gator. Huh. I, I guess you'd just kind of be laying down all the time. Uh, yeah, well, that's right. It's like a, it's kind of like a, um, it's like a gravity blanket. You know those weighted blankets? It's kind of like that, except it's all around you. It's actually pretty comfortable, to be honest. I went in there a few times to check it out. Oh man, that that sounds really soothing, and uh, you know, people throwing throwing money in at you. I, I mean, that sounds great. Yeah, the money hurts, but you know it's also you know money. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. Duck, uh, if I can, and uh, let me know if this is a, a question that's that's too painful for you. Um, what was it like being with uh, Gator Greg in his final moments? I mean, it was hard. You know, it's like being with anyone in their final moments. You know, it's. I mean, you're kind of looking at your watch the whole time. You know, because you're like, oh crap, when's this going to happen? You know, it's it's just. You just try to make him comfortable. You know, mm -hmm. I had um, I had him resting across like three old couches that I pushed together, and I was um, you know, doing our favorite game, which is I would chuck chicken wings into his beak, kind of like a carnival game. Right. And um, you know, I just kind of we do this thing where I would go further and further from him to see if I can nail it, kind of like an alley oop kind of thing. And you know, after a while, he would not even moving his legs, so it just kind of hit his snout, and it was just kind of sad because the chicken wings were just stick to his. I'm sorry. They were just kind of kerplop right there on a snout, and they would stick to it. it he couldn't reach it because he has he has a tiny gator arms. His, his tongue don't go out that far because it's a gator tongue, so it only goes out like a little bit. It's like one of them snakes with the tongue kind of goes out and kind of comes back in, and you're like, oh, damn, look at that. I'm... <laughs> I'm so sorry, Doc. Uh, that that sounds just awful to to be here for. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm just living through it again. Damn, I just want to oh, thank you for your years of friendship. Right. Thank you. Thank yours. Right. I, I think I think the whole town uh, feels at least a little bit of your grief. I know nobody can know exactly how you feel, um, but uh, I. I, I Everyone, I think, here feels a, a real and substantial loss. I appreciate that. Thanks, Doug. Um, it just really feels good to be part of a community right now. Yeah. Yeah. What's next for, for you, Doc? Um, I mean, it, this kind of feels like a, like a new chapter in some ways. You know, I don't know what's next for me, Horace. You know, to be honest, in a way, it's kind of like a silver lining because Gator Greg was getting real expensive to feed. Okay, right. I mean, with with all this rise in inflation, thanks Obama. You know, we were just getting so much debt. You know, hundreds of pounds of meat, and he always turned his snoot up at the low quality meat. He'd be like sitting there, like I'd rather queef than eat low grade beef. You know, so I always had to get him the good stuff. And everything is just so expensive, and I don't even know how I'm going to do a meat mayor next year. I mean, now I have to do one of those like Beyond Burger meat mayor. Heck, at this point, it's going to be a broccoli mayor. Oh. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I, I don't care for that. Yeah, no, I don't care for you. Maybe like a green bean mayor, or like an okra mayor. I mean, I, Ooh. I don't know, but it's just, it's a real, you know, I'm in a real, real pickle right, right. now. If that pickle was made out of high cost beef. I hope you don't do that. Um, if you're looking at something like that, I definitely bring it to maybe the city council. Maybe, I, I don't know. We can do a collection. Uh, a vegetarian meat mayor. I I don't know. That just it feels like we're really bucking tradition. And uh, it's it's not something I want to do. But you know, I'm not I'm not made of money. I have an animal on my premises who eats quarters. So I don't know how I'm going to scrounge up the funds to do this. But you know, every death you get a new beginning. That's uh, you know, that's kind of a sweet thought. Yeah, I've been thinking about the sign outside the Duck Winners Gate Aganza, a Duck Winters experience, a Duck Winners company. Um, could use maybe, I don't know, could use a taxidermic gator head. Oh. You know? Yeah, I'm thinking about maybe Gator Greg Legan. Come keep on living and have a big old 
his head big old open and then people could throw things in it you know oh, how it, fun it, and i think it would be fun you know because here's the thing those are expensive but when life gives you dead gators you know make gatorade now now would you use that uh that giant head would you use it on the sign um because i could also see like maybe putting it on top of a trash can so you're like throwing your trash to the gator's mouth or even on some sort of midway attraction uh to win a stuffed animal i gotta tell you horse you got a real head for this stuff because i was gonna put it on a trash can because i have those and then anything they throw in would go in that trash but i have to put up a sign that says no trash because you know you don't want to be picking out quarters from like you know cans of scud and stuff like that yeah yeah you don't want to be sorting uh at all you don't want you don't want to have to sort the trash to to get the coins you know horse you were telling me you were asking me like what it was like during his final moments and i forgot to mention this i just wanted to tell you during his final moments i just i sang him a song this is his favorite song it's smooth operator by Sh- shaw day mm-hmm. but instead of smooth operator i just um this is real clever you're probably not gonna see this one coming but i would sing smooth alligator Smooth alligator. Smooth alligator. And I mean, I don't know the rest of the words of the song, so I would just sing that over and over, but he loved it. Right. And I scratch his tummy and, you know. Did, uh, yeah, just... did Gator Greg Luganis have a, a relationship to that song, or was it just a, a tune that he really loved? Yeah, I mean, he, to be honest, I don't know if Gators could hear music, but so maybe I'm projecting things onto him. Mm-hmm. As I am going through grief, maybe I'm reading into certain situations that do not exist. But yeah, that was his favorite song. He pretty much, you know, that was his his anthem. Uh-huh. Um, you know, that was like his like Sade was basically his Taylor Swift. Right. And for a lot of us uh, that were around uh, during that time. Yeah. Sade. Mm. Sade. <laughs> uh, well, Doc, is there anything else that. I don't know. You'd like to share. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really deal with grief on a, a daily basis, um, but I, I want to give you a platform if you want to say something, uh, but I don't want to force you to if you're not if you're not feeling it. Of course. I, first of all, I love you for saying that. Like, um, I just say that, you know, a lot of people are afraid of grief because it hurts. But what is grief but just an absence of love? And right. That's what I have for, for Gator Greg is that, yeah, I feel bad. I feel real bad. But that's just because. I love them so much, you know, and is it going to hurt my bottom line? Hell yes. It is going to hurt like a mother. And that just shows to show you how much respect and love, you know, we have for, for, for one another, you know, me with him making me money and him with me, you know, throwing them like, you know, five day old chicken wings. Well, here's a quick question for you uh, before I let you go, uh, Doc. Um, what's going to happen to Alleyway Steve? Like, uh, does he does he belong to you now? Because um, he was in your property for so long. Does he have any claim over over the Gators' dead body? I, I mean, uh, to be honest, Alleyway Steve is long gone. He got out. And he 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 made a run for it. I was going to let him stay, but we don't really have an alley. That's the thing when you have on a Gator farm. Right. There aren't those kind of those crevices that would make a creature like him comfortable. You know, he's like an opossum. Like, you know, he wants to be in a small, dark. That's where he feels good. Yeah. And we just don't have that. So I don't know where Alleyway Steve is, but he did leave with one of my big sticks, which I wasn't too happy about. Right. Because, you know, I, I like my sticks. Almost I mean, uh, you know. almost more like alligator Steve at, at this point. Kind of looking like that. Yeah. He did look like he had one of them gator teeth around him like a necklace, which I was like, did you take that off of him and make a necklace while you were inside of him? You oh, son of a gun. Oh, he's I don't just... care for that. Yeah, well, he, you know, he's crafty. I right. Mean, you know, you, you got to be crafty when you're living in an alley. I mean, those guys, he's a real DIY type. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I find that a little sociopathic. Yeah, I, I don't care for that. Mm. Well, you know, he's the city's problem now, so who knows what's going to happen. Right. Uh, well, uh, Duck, uh, thank you uh, so much. I know there's going to be uh, a service uh, for Gator Greg Luganis. Uh, g- can you tell us uh, when that'll be? Yeah, come on down this Saturday to the Duck Winters Gator Ganza, Duck Winters Experience. You know, come on down this Saturday to the Duck Winters Gator Farm. 
we're going to have a um, big old, big old funeral like you've never seen before. All right. It's going to be real respectful. Okay. We're going to have a 21 t-shirt cannon salute. All right. And those are all going to be filled with duck winners t-shirts. All right. And they're all triple XL. So they're going to fit everybody. No smalls this year. Okay. And then, you know, obviously, um, it's going to be sponsored by Gatorade. I haven't told them that, but I assume that they're going to be on board because, you know, it makes perfect branding sense. Also, you know, it's going to be an all-you-can-eat chicken wing buffet, but B-Y-O-C-W, bring your own chicken wings. And it's only $25 to get in. Okay. Okay, Now, that's a steal. And all that money is going to go to a memorial for Gator Greg. Luganus that will be put up at a later date. All right. Uh, just real quick, is that the uh, the Gator Ganza next to the elementary school, or is that the one uh, on the outskirts of town? We're going to be having two simultaneous celebrations, one next to the one for the elementary school. That'll be more family-friendly. And then the one on the outside of the town, there is going to be a, a Gator Ganza after dark kind of uh, program that's mm-hmm. going to be on uh, where we're going to have gator themed strippers. And so that one's going to be, uh, you know, good for, for the, the, the non-family people or, you know, families that are like just super duper cool. Right. Right. It's going to be a, a little blue. Yeah, it's going to be, I'm hoping it turns into one of them group orgasms. Right. Cause I think when people grieve, there's a lot of like kind of funeral sex that happens uh, from what I hear. So I'm hoping like that kind of happens because that'll be like a fun silver line of the whole thing. And it's pretty much what Gator Greg would have wanted. Yeah. I I hadn't uh I hadn't heard that. Just large but, uh, amounts of group, anonymous, primal, voracious, sexy sex. Mm-hmm. So horse, I hope I see you there. Uh well I, I I I'm talking to our station manager about uh, broadcasting from mean a one lot of those. To Gator Greg Horace, it would mean a lot to him. Right, I, I think because of uh, FCC uh, regulations, we might have to broadcast from the more family friendly one. Um, well, listen, you come on down. Make sure to wear rip away pants. Right, yeah. If I if I come you know, to the, the ones like the basketball town. players wear right before they go on to the go on to the yeah court yeah go, the warm up pants. Yeah, warm up pants because you know it's going to be. Oh boy, he's going. He's going to be an exercise. That's for sure. All right. Uh, well, Duck, uh, I, I hope we see you there, and um, thank you so much for for joining us and uh, sharing your grief. I, I don't know if you're going to uh, stick around and, and listen to the show, but uh, I, we're having people call in tonight to to share their thoughts and memories about Gator Greg, and uh, maybe that'll soothe uh, a broken heart uh, just a little bit. Listen, I, I never even knew that radios radios had other stations because I'm I'm a KPFK man through and through. So. This is on my dial, and it never changes. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much, Doc. We'll uh, we'll Unless talk I to you to soon. Check like the the traffic. You know, some sometimes I change to check traffic or weather. Right. Also, I, there's a couple of you know, um, kind of classic rock stations that I'm into. But other than that, I am KPFK, baby. <laughs> it's KFAK. Uh, and and thanks. I Doc. also like hip hop. Oh well, that is KPFK. Yeah, yeah. uh, that's the hip hop yeah. station. But I am down with the KPKK. That is absolutely right. Certain. That's uh, that's AM weather. Um, mm. We're we're KFAK. Well, I don't know. you got so many K's in there. I can't keep it straight. Yeah, K- there K- there K- are K- a K- lot of K's. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's too many K's. Yeah, it's it's pretty infuriating if you're you're trying to learn all the radio stations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like I feel like I'm back in school and I'm getting everything wrong. <laughs> all right, Doc. Uh, well, we'll we'll talk to you soon. Uh, we're gonna get on with the show and uh, have people call in. But uh, thanks, thank you, Horace. thank you I'll, for calling I'll, in. I love you. <laughs> Uh, well, we love you too, Doc. And love uh, we you. loved Gator Greg Luganis. Thank you, Horace. Thanks so much. Appreciate your, your time. All right. Let's uh, let's take another quick call here before uh, we go to break. Uh, go ahead, caller. Yo, yo, yo. What up, my dude? Who is, th- who is this? Cordonario Chamungo, my guy. How are you doing tonight, Cordonario? You keeping it together? Been better, been better, dude, been better. The gator straight up got me weeping. Yeah, I, I know uh, a lot of folks are, are feeling the same, uh, taking it pretty hard. Uh, alleyway Steve lost his home, uh, for instance, uh, and a lot of people lost uh, 
what they would consider a, a, a friend. Nobody, nobody's taking it harder than me. Horace, you know, everything in life, I go hard. In the gym, I go hard. At the club with my boys, I go hard. And I'm going the hardest to grief right now, my dude. My eyes are doing squats and making big, muscly tears. Well, look, uh, Cordon Audio, I, a lot of folks are, are feeling really down right now. So, so the best we can do here at Night Drive is uh, just try to make a space for, for people to talk about and, and share their grief and, and just really celebrate Gator Greg, you know? I guess, my dude, but if anyone thinks they're grieving harder than me, they should come to the gym or meet me behind Hank's old Arby's and we'll have a cry off. I whip your ass. You ha- you're a happy person. I'm the saddest man alive. I'm the- I'm so sad. I'm the saddest person that ever was or ever will be. Well, we'll leave you to it, Cordonadio. If you're out there listening and uh, your method of getting over this is participating in a grief fight, well, uh, it sounds like uh, you've got a couple of places to go. Thanks, Horace. And if you're just tuning in and you're listening to Night Drive, we're talking about the community's loss of Gator Greg Luganus, beloved alligator, and almost friend. Give me a call if you want to share your opinions or a, a fond memory of Gator Greg. Uh, that number to call me up is 305 209 9686. We'll be back with more Night Drive right after this. <laughs> My dog loves to whiff on a good smell, and I'd bet a whole pile of sand dollars yours does too. We love our pups, don't we, folks? But I'm a busy man, and I don't have time for Fido to lethargically catalog a Rolodex of scents each time we pop out for walkies. That's why I'm talking so fast. There's too many smells and not enough sand in the hourglass. But doggies got snoots, and they need scents to sniff for their smellers. If your hound isn't sniffing, he's a missing out. And that's why I, TK Cuddles, went straight to the source. I've curated all the best dog smells into TK Cuddles' Doggaroo Smorgasbord. Tantalize your pupperoo with these smells for your pup snort. Food, poo smell, wet grass, random animal big, other dog, fragrant garbage, a guest's crutch, a guest's butt, the back of a guest's knee, random animal small, food that's not theirs, wet hydrant, whole turkey carcass, Small part of a turkey. Weird dark patch on sidewalk. That's a good one. Half-eaten burger in the back of the car and on a hot day, too. And the most fragrant canine asshole smell science can muster to date. At least that's what they told me. I think these are terrible whiffs to waft into my nose, which means your dog's gonna go nuts for it. Absolutely bonkers. If you can drag your dog away from my dog a smorgasbord, that means I didn't doggy do my job right. And I did. I did do my job right. I always do my job right. That's the TK guarantee I printed on all my business cards and posters. TK Cuddles dog a smorgasbord. Your dog sniffer will never be bored with my stinky sm- Smogger's board. They're spelled differently, too. It's important to know. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Night Drive on Fakahatchee's own KFAK, the heart of the swamp. We're going to get right back to your calls and opinions in just a few moments. But first, it's time for a few Fakahatchee community announcements. Francisco Street is reopened with the removal of the wad. The Fakihachi Owls would like to apologize for the inconvenience and let you know maybe next time they just won't. They won't try at all. Maybe that'll make you happy if they just didn't participate. They just sat out on the side and didn't show you a kick-ass parade float. Is that what you want? Because we'll do it if you want the parade to suck. Come join us on the west side for our big annual neighborhood block party. If you love cubes or cuboids, this will be the place to be. Wood cubes, metal cubes, we've got all the blocks stacked high or just laying around. Come meet a celebrity block and get your photo taken with gold ore from the hit game Minecraft. If you're a blockhead, get on over here. The Florida Department of Transportation would like to let you know that Francisco Street will be closing this evening as the West Side sets up for their big neighborhood block party and will be closed through the week. No through traffic will be allowed. Please use William Bryden Avenue as a detour around the area. 
Grab your bows because archery camp be- Sorry. Grab your bows because archery camp begins next month. It's not too late to sign your kids up, but time is running out to enroll them in a sport that counts as a physical education credit and doesn't require them to run. Help your little brainiac meet graduation requirements and stay out of locker room showers with a sport so fun it'll make them quiver. Tickle Club is doing their annual day of community outreach, and they invite you to join them and get hands-on experience helping the community. Get in touch with Philly and Fetterman for more details and times to see if the idea grabs you. All right, that is all the announcements I have here, so that means it's time to get back to your calls and opinions. That number again is 305-209-9686. Let's go over here and take another call. Uh, who am I speaking to? Yeah, this is Charlie Brisket. I understand from uh, from my producer's notes here that uh, that you know quite a bit about alligators. Yes, sir. I am an alligatorologist. Well, it's it's always nice to have an expert on the show. Thank you. Uh, I don't get to talk about alligators very often. That seems like a like a real shame. Is there some sort of lab uh, you're affiliated with? Yes, I have a black lab, and I love him very much. His name is Snooper. I. <laughs> Sorry, I, I meant a, a laboratory. Oh, right. Yeah, um, I'm nervous. Sorry. No worries at all. Just uh, We're just talking here. We're just two people talking, and uh, thousands of people are listening out there on, on their radio, so there's absolutely nothing to be worried about. Uh, what lab are you uh, affiliated no, with? No, I meant, I meant yes to your question, but no, I'm not affiliated with a lab. Oh. I'm... A, I'm, I'm I guess I'm what you would call a hobbyist. Well, that's fine. I, I've met some uh, pretty smart hobbyists in my day that uh, that were experts, uh, in my opinion. They just weren't uh, just weren't recognized as such. Uh, h- how do you feel about the loss of Gator Greg? Well, it's it's pretty sad. I didn't want to get out of the bathtub, but then my mom was like, "No, you have to get out of the bathtub because I need to use the toilet, and it's for number two. Right, right. Uh, well, well um, what what can you tell us about alligators? Well, they're scaly, and they live in fresh water. Right. And they're also always erect. Excuse me? They're always erect. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? They're always erect, and their dingling is on a bungee. It's like mashing really hard on a toothpaste tube that's got a wiener in it. Bloop. That is some fact. Or like a stress ball, you know, when you squeeze it and the eyes bug out, except in an alligator's case, the eyes are a gator's dick. Okay. No, it's true, I swear. And then, just like you hit a button on a lightsaber and the sword goes away, that's how its wang goes away. And that's how its penis goes away. No, it's true, I swear. You can go roll an alligator on its back and see. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that. Well, then you'll just have to believe me. Which is good, because it's true. I bet Gator Greg had a big old switchblade willy. Right, well, I I think this is a, a lot of absolute bull... Huh. Okay, well, um, what do you know? I just, uh, I just did a quick search, and uh, it looks like that is absolutely true. Uh, I'm sorry, I doubted you. You probably just thought I was some dumb little kid, right? Yeah, uh, okay, I, I thought you were a little kid. Joke's on you, old man. I've grown up. I'm almost 14, and I've seen more alligator hogs than you can even dream of. Nuh-uh. Yeah, huh? Nuh-uh. Yeah, huh? Actually, you, you probably have. I... Why on earth am I competing with you on this? Fine, you've seen more alligator penis than I have. Yeah, that's right, and don't you forget it. Cool, yeah, I won't. Loser. Yeah, but I've got the button. Fair warning, if you call in to talk about an alligator meat stick, I will cut you off without warning. This, tonight, is a show about remembrance and dignity as we say goodbye to an institution. A beloved old friend as we send them off to a better place. Let's go to another call. He put the swamp stronger in her cloaca to make them eggs. Oop, my bad. Accidentally chose line one again. Aren't we learning a lot today? Uh, what they said is technically true, but uh, ugh, what a gross way to say it. You know what? Let, this is fine. Uh, let's. We're going to go to another call uh, right now. Let's go over here to line, line six. Go ahead, caller. Good evening, Horace. Uh, who am I speaking with? Oh, come along now. It's your favorite doctor. 
Dr. Leonard Scroggins. <laughs> Dr. Skinny. Yeah, Lenny Skinny, <laughs> if you please. Uh, how, how are you tonight, Doc? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you, as always, for uh, running this program for those of us, us, us night owls who burn at both ends, doing our work, staying up late. It's nice to have a little uh, little respite from uh, from medical science to listen to your program. Right. I, I, are you grieving like the rest of us tonight, Doc? Uh, ooh, uh, should I be doing that? It, it depends on, uh, you know, how you feel about Gator Greg Luganis uh, passing away. Uh, yes, right. No, I do, I do not. No, I, as a doctor, I, I mostly choose not to grieve. Uh, I would spend too much time doing it what, with all of the uh, just mortality that I am faced with. Also, that, that Gator was, he was old. His time was a coming. Right. Um, gators are not uh, particularly healthy creatures when it comes to how they treat their insides. Did you know that they eat rocks? Did you I know I, that. I did not know that. Oh, they have to eat it to break down the because the, they can't. They don't chew their bites small enough, which is something I advise all of your listeners to do. Make sure you chew each bite of food thirty-two times if you if you have the time to do so. But gators do not do that, and so they swallow big, big bites of their food, and it gets caught up there in their alligator stomachs, and they have to swallow rocks. To, to break it down further. So they're, How th about that? Their tummies are full of rocks. Yes. Like a, like a big time. grinder. Like a big grinder or like, like that poor, poor uh, wolf in Red Riding Hood when she fills his stomach with rocks after she cuts him open to retrieve her grandma. Good God. I, I don't remember that from Red Riding Hood. Oh, everybody has a different version of that story as, as I understand it, but that was what I was told. Yeah, the uh, the version of Red Riding Hood I'm familiar with is she sees the zipper on the wolf and unzips the zipper, and it's actually her grandfather who's been teasing her the whole time. No, that that's very that's too silly for me. That's too silly. Right. Well, you know, everyone uh, learns learns it different. Uh, oh, what are you calling in for uh, for tonight, Doc? Well, I had an exciting update. I was uh, I was listening to your program while I was going over my my research and uh, and working on uh, on the old Masticon Wii, and and we we've we've had a bit of a breakthrough, and I thought that you might be interested as well as your listeners. Yeah, uh, uh, let us hear it. Uh, well, I, I do I do believe what had once been declared to be uh, viral is no longer such. It is not a virus. It is caused by external, even man-made falses, this bored mouth, which is the common man's term. Right. So uh, it wasn't communicable at all. Bored, bored no. mouth. Well, I guess don't hold out on it. So what's the cause? Uh, as I understand it, based on the patients I have seen and the lab results I have overlooked, uh, I am... Uh, <laughs> Looked at rather, not overlooked. <laughs> I had overlooked some apparently earlier when I was so fast to say it was viral. No, it is caused by high frequency radio waves, uh, transmissible waves. So not transmissible uh, as a, a virus, but but waves that are transmitted, hitting folks right in the mouth. Right. How does that affect the, the mouth? It hits them right in their little taste buds, those glands there all along your tongue. And they get all, all wiggly whacked. And then it, and, and suddenly kapow, you can't do no tasting. Wow. Um, so I, I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. Um, you, you're saying radio waves. Uh, like, I, I'm suddenly feeling a, a little guilty. Like, uh, did my show oh, cause this? Uh, you know, is this KFAK's well, I mean, fault? Certainly, certainly it did. But just as our all of our automobiles are pumping out noxious fumes into the earth and killing all of the animals, you uh, certainly are not solely to blame. We all play a part in this, uh, and 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 we didn't know. It's much like the cigarette smoker from uh, years back. The information wasn't there, so you let go of that guilt. Uh, but yes, right now my voice. Traveling through the airwaves of Fakahatchee is uh, potentially nailing sons of bitches in their mouth and hurting their taste buds. 
that's that's terrifying. Isn't <laughs> I, it though? It uh, it's got me all look. Listen, I'm talking like a younger man. It's got me all worked up. So I, I, I guess, Doc, how is it going away? Like, if we've continued to broadcast, um, and as far as I know, nothing, nothing else is, has changed. As, as I see it, there's two options. One is that the mouth, it, it adapts. As we all know, the, the, the human tongue is the strongest muscle, and the cells on it are the quickest to heal themselves. Have you ever burned your tongue so scaldingly that you could not taste, but then a day later everything was fine. Have you have you ever experienced that, Horace? Yeah, yeah. Usually on uh, like a hot soup or, or a stew mm-hmm. that I'm I'm just really hungry for. Yes, perhaps pizza that you thought you oh, just gosh. couldn't wait any longer to well, get it. Into that usually your mouth. gets the top of my my mouth, not even the tongue. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Yes. No, I forget uh, which how people eat that pizza. If you were to hold the slice upside down, perhaps. Are you anyway, an upside down uh, slice eater? Well, I like to fold it, you see. I like oh, to fold the big course. slice in half, and then you just never know which part of your mouth the cheese is going to tickle. Uh, but the the point is, I, I believe the mouth can adapt, and mm-hmm. it can evolve, and and perhaps even in a short period of time. And then my second explanation is a change in the weather and people ducking their heads down more as it rains and thereby uh, absorbing the radio waves into the crown of their skulls as opposed to the jaw portion of their faces. I, 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 are these like uh, 5G waves, like 5G phones? or? Oh, no, sir. No, no, I, I, don't, I don't believe so. No, I believe you're most vulnerable in your car, in your automobile, listen to the radio. I believe that the, uh, 5G, in fact, is a healthy, uh, a healthy type of of wave to get into your body it is a uh, it is it is modern and new, and new enough science that it, it simply caresses the cells inside you and uh and perhaps even makes you makes you stronger helps your muscles heal faster it's a uh, it's a uh, 5g might as well be uh human growth hormone wow are, are you doing anything to take advantage of uh, that sort of medical science Ah, uh, not me. No, I don't. Uh, at, at this age, uh, once a doctor of medicine uh, reaches reaches my age, you you try to work as as little as possible. Uh, there's there's simply no need. So, uh, no, sir. I, I I like to learn about it. But a little too tired to try and uh, in, invent something new. Yeah, because I I was thinking like you know you could rig a whole bunch of like cell phones up in some sort of chamber. Uh, and you know, like make, uh, I don't want to say like a super soldier, but like someone like real strong. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, simply put, if you want to go out and buy enough, uh, uh, phones and data plans and, and strap all of them to your body and then have all of your friends call you at once, I see no reason why that wouldn't, uh, make you stronger, but, uh, who, who has the time or the money simply put. Right. Yeah. They, they really get you on data. I, I didn't think about that part. Absolutely. It, it took over your whole body. It's, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's upwards of, of, of 45 cellular phones. Yeah, it's just another health benefit that, you know, the rich are going to take advantage of. It, it tends to be the way, and that is what pays the good doctor's bills, Horace. So uh, I can't uh, 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 be too upset. Well, I, I can't fault you for that either, Doc. Is there any way to tell, like, where these waves are coming from? Like, maybe what's generating the most waves? I don't even know if I'm talking about this correctly. I, 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 to be to be quite honest with you, I don't either. When I pass a radio tower, I strap on my chin strap, uh, my my old rugby helmet. Otherwise, I I simply do not know. I I uh, would assume it is whatever can send the waves through the air, and there are all the those defunct radio stations and towers. So who knows what's flying through us at any given moment? Lots and lots of tiny little beams. Um, and so at this point in my research, I cannot declare one way or another where the, the waves are coming from. Though, as speculated, I do believe someone like yourself is, is 
is firing them out there. We're not the only radio station, Doc. There's radio stations all across the U.S., but uh, they haven't had any cases of Mastica on we. It, it, it seems to have been localized here. Well, and, and, and so that must have something to do with uh, the, the uh, uh, thickness of the air, uh, the positioning of towers, the, the, the directionality of people who are experiencing it. And, and that is why I, I do believe, based on my numbers, the ones I have assessed, uh, sitting in your car, uh, listening to the radio, has, has produced the most Mastica Ennui. And uh, and therefore, uh, perhaps it has something to do with where our highways around these parts are are angled. Huh. But again, you'll have to you'll have to forgive my uh, ignorance about some of these some of these things. I can simply state that that the damage done to the taste buds and taste glands along the tongue cannot be uh, attributed to a virus. Um, and it makes the most sense, and and uh, and the evidence uh, points toward radio transmissive waves entering the mouth area. Wow, that's a lot to take in, Doc. Uh, should we even continue broadcasting? And like, is is this safe? I I think so. Well, look, what happens when you are a, a sufferer of bored mouth, Horace? You you struggle to taste. Mm -hmm. I think that is a small price to pay for us to learn about the potentiality of damage done to ourselves by uh, radio waves. And, and so perhaps some people will enjoy their barbecue a little less in the coming months and years. But we will learn more about how we could save ourselves from perhaps a radio-born damage ray that causes greater problems. Right. If you understand. I, I do. I, there is something that's sort of bothering me about this a little bit, though, is I, the radio station has been here and, and been broadcasting for a while. Mm. Why did Mastica on Wii or, or Boardmouth, uh, whichever you prefer, why did that suddenly suddenly start? Like, Again, it, it, it can be attributed to the evolution uh, and the adaptability of the tongue and the mouth and perhaps the, uh, the foods and flavors uh, that reach our mouths. You, you, I'm sure, know of all of the new delicious beverages and foods that, uh, that were not available uh, even, even just a few years ago. And how those may have an effect on your tongue. Well, I, right now, I am sipping on a, a, a fine, a robust uh, Mexican tequila, which has been around for a while and perhaps protects me from Mastica Ennui. Whereas a, a nice tall pour of scud could make me more susceptible. And, and that is to say nothing about the delicious and I believe a uh, uh, healthy beverage of scud. Continue to drink at your uh, pleasure. I feel like you just gave us mixed messages there, Doc. What I, did I, which part? I, I drink I, I, old I'm, tequila, but be nervous. Yes, no, well, I, look, get your bald mouth and, 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 get, and move past it. And, and uh, it's probably because of the radios. It's hard to say uh, exactly what, how this will all unfold. Right. Uh, how far into, uh, into your research are you? It's uh, it's it's fresh because the the samples uh, from the lab can only go back a few months. We've only got we've got very limited sample size. So I am as far as anyone. No one has researched more than I have. But again, these medical anomalies they take they take years at best. So. I believe I have discovered something important and something that we should be aware of. But let us not put any sort of finality on the good doctor's report. Right, right. Uh, well, I, I guess that makes sense. Um, and and you said we're okay to continue broadcasting. Like that's oh, your, I think you have your medical. To. I think it is important. I if I come back in months and say, please shut it down, horse. You are you are killing the young children's tongues. I will uh, offer up a great mea culpa for not having said so earlier. But at this point, no, 
uh, the people need to hear what you have to say, and we need to be able to call into your program and help people at this hour. Well, Doc, you, you've given us quite a lot to, to think about here uh, this evening. Uh, yes, and I'm and in the middle I, of our, our grief as well. Like, um, yeah, I, that is, I, I apologize that I've gone off topic. And, um, and uh, uh, to everyone who is grieving, I wish you a speedy recovery. Uh, it's not worth all of the emotional anguish uh, because everyone will pass. Uh, Doc, while, while we have you, uh, and, and we can get sort of a medical opinion, um, what would you say your your top four? I, obviously, you, you don't think anyone should grieve, um, but it, for people who are grieving, what are mm. your sort of top four ways to to get over it and move on? Oh, to overcome grief. Uh, well, I would. Uh, I always uh, urge people to use the substances that they think uh, agree with their bodies. As I said, I'm enjoying a Mexican tequila. And some people should not drink, but I feel as though it uh, it tempers me just fine. Um, for others, something like uh, Scud will help change your brain chemistry just the right amount to get you out of out of that grief funk. Exercise is always important and good, um, and sometimes uh, just 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 getting away, just go find yourself away from that which. It reminds you of the grief that you are so stricken with and and be away from it. Right. Like, take a little trip. Take a little trip. I, right. I don't see why not. Take a little trip. We should all be able to enjoy a, a travel from time to time. And especially if we are feeling trapped within a chamber of, of sorrow, um, get out of that chamber and, and spread your wings and fly. And I believe that was only... Only three suggestions, but I, I don't know if I have any more. So it, that's good. Like three is three is nice. Um, is, is there uh, a specific climate or or place that it's better to go to to get away from the grieving, uh, the sorrow uh, chamber? I think you called it. Uh, yes, to get out of your ch chamber of sorrow. <clears throat> I would recommend some place with a high altitude. Uh, that lightheadedness uh, sometimes keeps you from from falling too deeply back into your thoughts so uh up to a, a mountaintop if right. you can find one um with perhaps with snow uh because it's it's lovely okay uh well i, I think that's uh some tremendous advice if you're listening uh, this is uh, a doctor's uh, opinion here uh so uh book your tickets <laughs> I, I guess if if you're really brokenhearted and you, you, you think you're not going to make it through I recommend it. Doc, uh, thanks so much for, for calling in tonight and uh, sharing your research. Um, that's that's incredible. Uh, please please keep us updated as, as you get oh, further into it. Oh, I will. Right. Uh, well, uh, we're going to move on, Doc, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. <coughs> I choked on my tequila. Good night, Boris. I know uh, a lot of you out there like to make your voices heard, but but can't. Uh, for, for whatever reason. I'm not judging. Maybe a dirty dealing octopus sea witch took him. I don't know. But I do know that you can always get your opinion heard right here on Night Drive by sending us an email or tweet. Just like Wanda Magix, uh, who emailed us here at Night Drive FM. Horace, it's terrible to hear about that old sweet gator. But I think that's probably the best way to die draped naked across Duck Winter's couch, reclining gracefully as Duck looks on. Do you know if he's single? The gator's dead, Wanda. I don't think he's looking for a girlfriend, but thanks for the email. Baby 91 tweeted at us to say, Devastated beyond words. This is a huge psychological blow that I was unprepared for. I'm absolutely distraught, and I no longer want to live in this world anymore. Please, Lord, come take me away to be with you and that alligator king. I think we're all feeling that blend, though uh, maybe not quite as strongly as you. Um, though maybe Gordon Audio uh, is feeling it as strongly as you. I, maybe you guys should meet up and uh, hash it out and see who feels the, the strongest. 
Solid Gold Nad tagged us on Instagram uh, at Night Drive FM Insta. It's uh, a picture of a woman with a ponytail and sweatpants hugging a large ga- Oh, it, duh, it's Gator Greg Luganis. Uh, and I assume this is her uh, giving him a, a giant hug. Oh, that's, uh, that's really sweet. Uh, in the description here, Solid Gold Nad uh, tagged us. Uh, at Night Drive FM Insta, got the chance to meet this absolute Chad with the Gator Gans's VIP package. Fed him huge chunks of goose and other less clearly defined meats, like a big scaly teddy bear. Never thought that hug would be our last. Hashtag Gator Ganza, hashtag RIP Gator Greg, hashtag Broken Heart, hashtag Angel Wings, hashtag See You Later Alligator, hashtag After a While, I Miss Your Smile. Here's a bit of a rarity. Uh, user Banquet Bear OG came to our subreddit, r slash night drive FM, to post a fond memory of that time he met Gator Greg Luganis as a small child, and he felt that Gator Greg smiled at him, and that inspired him to pick up the guitar and be the important musician he is today. Ah, what a lovely sentiment, Banquet Bear OG, but Unfortunately, you didn't flare your post, so we have had to delete it. And finally, at BlendTheBaby92 tweeted at Night Drive FM to say, Other account got suspended. I'm going to drink five different flavors of Scud and let the chemical reaction dissolve my guts into black ooze. Because that's what my insides already feel like without that big-assed scaly king lurking in our swamp. Well, Blend, even Dr. Skinny Scroggins strongly advises against mixing more than two flavors of Scud, uh, as the resulting liquid can be highly caustic or uh, potentially unstable. Uh, and three flavors of Scud mixed in one place is enough to potentially declare that zone uh, an environmental hazard. Uh, I'd hate, I'd really hate for that zone to be your tummy. All right, let's uh, fire up the phones again and uh, take another call. Uh, go ahead, line six. Go ahead, caller. Uh, well, hello, Horace. It's Splint Forsyth with the Fakahatchee Museum and Historical Society. How you doing tonight, Plinth? Frankly, I'm buzzing. Uh, it's like I've got a bottom full of bees over here, Horace. Really? Uh, uh, Why is that? Uh, is it because you're uh, excited to hear Alleyway Steve's back? Ha, no. No, I, I've got enough ankle scars already. Uh, I'm buzzing because uh, while I spend so much time archiving and keeping history, Horace, that sometimes just being alive on a day that history is happening is is exciting, yeah, even if it's a, a sad day. I, I felt the same way the day Kennedy was shot. Sure, sure, it's sad. Sad to the bone, like that rock song. But think about all the future people that weren't alive for it. And as a historian, that's pretty exciting. Like, I bet you don't remember Kennedy being shot at all. Plinth, I don't even know if I was an embryo at that point. So I, I do not remember Kennedy being shot. And I'm sure you've got the F-O-M-O every time you hear about Kennedy. But not this fella right here. Not this Plinth. Saw his noggin pop off myself back in Dallas. And that is why it's so exciting. I felt the same way back in 2001, being in New York for business at the first part of September. Yeah, I'm not sure a lot of people are feeling the same way you are tonight, Plinth. Oh, I'm, I'm sad. Don't get me wrong. I've shed a tear or two for Gator Greg. I'm not made of stone, but when I heard the news, I knew it was time for me to roll up my sleeves and really get to work. It was like an alarm bell, and now I gotta get dressed and slide down that fire pole to capture history. Because someone's got to help memorialize the dead and preserve their memory. Right, Horace? So I, I just don't have the luxury of a third or fourth tier. Just the one or two tiers for me. Are, are you planning an exhibit uh, about Gator Greg? Certainly, certainly. Most certainly. Gonna do it up real big time. Maybe put some of the pottery relics down in the basement. Most of the kids have already seen that ten or twelve times by the time they graduate anyway. We should come in sometime, Horace. We've got ourselves a great little museum here. And as I always say, you don't have to be on a field trip to learn about your town. Uh, but, but listen, Horace, do you know how old that gator was? No, no, I, I, I don't have any idea. I know Duck said he was uh, pretty old when he got him. Sure was, sure was. Old gator, old gator. Uh, it was 87 to be precise. 
Now, Duck only had him for the last oh, 20 years, so there's uh, a lot of people that may not know about that gator. For for instance, I only alligator to have a purple heart. Really? Oh, sure, sure. And um, how did that happen, exactly? Well, Gator Greg was about a month old when he came to live in Fakahatchee, and uh, he was part of a photo shoot with the mayor and city council to celebrate the opening of the Edison Shopping Center. Uh, the mayor held him in his arms like uh, you'd hold a friendly duck with a tummy ache. Well, they take the picture, and nobody's sure what to do with the gator while the mayor goes to use the toilet. So he just carries the gator into the little boy's room, and, well, according to the Fakahatchee Gazette at the time, the, the mayor said he dropped Gator Greg into the toilet while he was trying to unbutton his trousers. Gator Greg Luganus just slipped right down the pipe like when you do an oyster shooter. Everyone was sad, but obviously for the best, because Gator Care, oh, that's a line item the city budget doesn't have. And the Purple Heart comes in where? I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it, Horace. I, I gotta set the table first. Gotta set the table first. So, ten years later, uh, sewer lines jammed up and they go to clear it. So they backflow the water into the pipe and whoop, there's Gator Greg, like when your stomach realizes that oyster shooter's not fresh. And you're in Arizona on a hot day. Well... Gator Greg's much bigger at this time, but obviously he can take care of himself, so the town sets him loose to just be a gator and, and do gator things. But then someone raises the question, sure, Gator Greg can take care of himself now, but what about when he's older? Okay, and the Purple Heart comes in where? I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. They're worried about old Gator Greg and his sunset years, so they decide to get him set up with a social security number. The mayor pulls a few strings, and by yelling states' rights at the right people, they get him set up. They're thinking, great, fantastic. When Greg needs it, maybe he'll be able to pull a little bit of social security. Plinth. I'm getting to it. Well, Gator Greg turns 18, happy as a clam doing his gator thing. He gets a letter addressed to him, care of general delivery at the post office. Old Gator Greg has found himself drafted into Vietnam. So, they send him overseas, make a special helmet, and slap it on him. They sling a rifle across his back, and one of his squad mates writes, Born to Kill, on the helmet. That's not an important detail, Plinth. It's color, and it, it helps to paint the picture that I'll hang behind the table when it's all set. Fine, fine. Well, young Gator Greg Luganus. Oh, he thrives man. over I there. It's wet this story and hot, and long, he, just, he just eats whatever he likes, which is a lot of Viet Cong, rightly or wrongly. But he, he just really thrives over there in Vietnam. But then one night, his platoon is surrounded, and they can't find where the enemy is. Well, well, they find this tunnel that the combatants would use, like uh, under the ground, and he's hungry. And so his sergeant gives him an order to go down there and eat anything he finds, and... Well, he finds some food, but, well, one of those foods has a machete. And, well, poor Gator Greg, he takes a mean chop. But he clears out the tunnel and is, and is able to get on the other side of the enemy and turn the tables, even though he's taking that nasty chop to the head. Well, his tour finishes, and he gets back over to the States. It's summer of love and all that, and some bigwig sees his name and that he was wounded, saving his war pals, and decides, well, just maybe this Gator Greg should get the Purple Heart for Valor. Now... It's the day of the ceremony, and this general is looking at this alligator and is like, this isn't right. I need to talk to somebody about this. And after a lot of legal proceedings, they decide Greg should get the Purple Heart for Valor. But he shouldn't have been issued a social security number in the first place. And then he did a stint in the pen because, obviously, he hadn't paid taxes. Uh, you want to hear about when Gator Greg Luganus got to go to the White House and meet President Reagan? I mean, almost, but not enough to sit through another long story, Plant. I, I think you'd better save that for the museum. I, I mean, you don't want to give all your secrets away, do you? Oh, they're not secrets, Horace. I want people to know them. If I had the money, I'd put a big billboard right there along 75 so people could learn about all this stuff while they drive. Or build like a big drive through museum over the interstate, and you could see all the exhibits as you drive by. Maybe it tells you in your car somehow, like, uh, uh, maybe radio waves or something. Uh, here's an idea, Horace. No, thank you, Plinth. 
You didn't let me tell you my idea. But you did get to finish your story. Oh, well, that's true. Oh, yeah, I did get to... I got a bunch of them. If you stacked them up, they'd be as tall as the Empire State. <laughs> I don't know if any younger people out there are listening, but history is pretty the bomb, Horace. And not at all the fart, like the graffiti on the old stagecoach says. History's not a fart at all. It's just a story, like your inedible hulks and your spider moms, except history is real. Great, great. Uh, fantastic. Uh, thank you, Plinth. Uh, uh, as always, thank you for welcome. calling. Uh, uh, let's, hey, um, uh, Horace, uh, tell your mom hello for me, will you? Yeah, I will. I will. I, sorry, why, why is that exactly? Well, I had a real nice time with her out at Flying Fried Fork Fryers last night. I had the trout and a lot of laughs with a pretty lady. I, I, I will do that. All right, I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Plinth. Let's, uh, I, uh, I need a quick break, and then uh, we'll be back with more of your calls and opinions uh, uh, right here on Night Drive. The long haul, the dirt nap, the big sleep, six feet under. There's no reason to be afraid of death. I'm a grave in sons, and also a daughter. We want dying to be fun, so we invite you to come on down to our open house this weekend and experience the very best McGrave and Sons, and also a daughter, have to offer. Try it before you buy it. The Cavanista 5000 with titanium inlay and rich zebra wood paneling. It's got the smoothest, silkiest interior to ship you off to Cloud Town and enough room to pack your harp. Or for the discerning lady, the Ever Home Petite by Chrissy Teigen. The only coffin built to keep you short plus sized ladies looking as delicate as you feel with handles featuring mother of pearl swing bar and a six panel funneling to keep the eye moving down your corpse. Slap five with a mortician, throw some balls at our dunk tank and deep six our dad. It's all for charity. We'll also have a hot dog eating contest with deep discounts for the winner. We got burgers and drinks and balloon animals for the kiddos. It's all happening this weekend and the Grave and Sons. And also a daughter. All right, let's uh, let's go over here to line six, which is uh Huh. Uh, okay. Don't we don't have any info here on line six. It's uh, showing up as blocked. Uh, tonight we're talking about the loss of Gator Greg Luganus, uh, beloved uh, alligator mascot of the town. Practically, uh, how's that got you feeling, caller? Uh, feeling feeling nothing. Don't care about the gator. Okay. Well, I I guess that's technically a feeling. I don't give a shit about some alligator. I, I don't have much time. I, I cannot be caught using this phone. Oh, cool. Hey, what's up, cool guy? Staying up extra late past his bedtime just so he can say a swear on the radio. What? No, I'm not a kid. Listen, uh, the, the Dr. Scrog guy. Dr. Skinny? Who? Dr. Leonard Skinny Scroggins. Yeah, that's uh, the guy that, that just called, right? Look, uh, a lot of what he said is is absolute nonsense, but uh, uh, he wouldn't know. It, it's not your show that caused massacre on we. He's, like, so wrong, it's funny. I, I laughed when I heard it. Like, I, I was literally, like, rolling. Uh, not, not on the floor or anything, uh, but just, like, uh, lolling pretty hard. That's how funny it was to me, a, a, a scientist. Oh, well, that's good. Hang on. Yeah, I'm just putting in a message to the Lieutenant General. Well, we need more EL-84s. Because they keep burning out. I mean, it's because of the harmonics. I told you, we, we need something stronger, but you, you wanted this done with consumer parts to keep this up. Look, do you want to run this project? Okay, I, I think he's gone. So so it's not our show. Is, is it the radio station in, in general? Look, it's not your show, and your KFK it doesn't have the power, so don't stop broadcasting or, or anything. I, we need you to continue making it. it. It's super boring down here, and uh, we didn't know the public would be affected by this at, at all. This? Uh, what is the this that, that you're talking about here? 
we thought we were at a high enough frequency, but uh, it makes sense if I think about it in retrospect, though, being this far underground, it should have offset any physical effects. I just don't, though it could, it could be the low-lying waves interacting with the salt water. Well, well wait, uh, what is it about the salt water? Uh, because we've got a lot of this uh, all, all through the mangroves. Uh, hang on, hang on. Yeah, it's just finishing up. I can whisper into the phone if I want to. You don't get to tell me how to talk on a secured line. Get off my back, okay? Hello? All right. Well, that was a, uh, a very interesting phone call. Um, my producer is giving me the old finger twirl, telling me to shut my yap and wrap it up. So, uh, I think it's safe to say that, uh, Gator Greg Luganis is, uh, is gonna leave a giant alligator-sized hole in, uh, all of our hearts. Uh, the kind of hole that would be devastating if it were literal, and uh, one that won't be easily filled. I'm fighting the urge uh, right now to eulogize him, but uh, I, I think I'll leave that to better folk than I. Godspeed, gentle gator. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Good Morning Sun Buns with Tiffany Bunzel takes over tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Tomorrow morning, Tiffany's got fashion tastemaker Moth Brevis with the hottest funeral wear of 2023. She'll meet the cute little internal worms that are helping young Hollywood get their beach bodies ready for summer. And she'll meet Miami's newest resident, a one-legged baby penguin named Humphrey. Once again, that's all coming up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Be sure to tune in then. If you enjoyed the show this evening, please rate or review the show wherever you happen to experience it sound waves, even if you just hear it from somebody else's mouth as they retell it and leave a review spray painted on a nearby wall. Reviews are the second best way to let others know that the show might be worth listening to. The best way? Getting your barber to shave Night Drive into your sweet fade. You can reach the show on Twitter, for now, at Night Drive FM, on Instagram, at Night Drive FM Insta, or on Reddit, at r slash Night Drive FM. And there's always an open invitation to Night Drivers to come join us in the Discord. It's full of great folk from around the globe. We're always talking about something in there, and it's almost never, specifically, about the show and almost always something to laugh about. Currently, we're all revved up about Marvel Snap, and WWE's Royal Rumble is right around the corner. To join the Discord, don't be shy. Just reach out and ask for an invite. We'd love to have you in there. Want that Night Drive look? Nightdrivemerch.com will take you to storefronts where you can get shirts and stickers and the Season 1 Night Drive poster, which might look even cooler under a black light, but we don't know because we haven't tried. Your mileage may vary. Night Drive is produced by Michael Truly and is hosted by a man who had his first existential crisis in the womb, Horace Wexler. These callers really phoned it in this week. Evan Gaustad, Clint Gage, Casey Redman, and Ron Babcock. Want to be a lightning caller on the show? Follow our social media and keep an eye out for the prompts. Also, a very special thank you to our musical guest, Trip Tech, featuring Cherry Piss, who didn't play any music but just sat in the booth and gave us a thumbs up in support. You're the wind beneath our wings, gentlemen. That's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you all for being here and sharing your grief. Uh, I think it makes all our burdens just a little lighter. Well, it's 5 o'clock, and until Tiffany takes over at a later 5 o'clock, here's six and a quarter hours of government-mandated buzzing. That kind of makes my head feel a little tingly sometimes. So until next time... I'm Horace Wexler. Keep night driving.